looking good. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back, hour. guys, to the dance hour. Last week was fun. I'm excited to hear and see everyone again. Well, just see you. Hey, thanks, man. You're the only one that matters. Whoa, we got really Mr. Rogers from the start. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> hey, this is called the Fahim Anwar Dance Hour. Whoa, man. You know? Thanks, so, dude. We're here to see you. Should man. we explain why we're dressing it up? Um, Are yeah. we doing like a late night thing? Yeah, it's, our, it's, it's the new we're look. We're trying to get a new late night show. We're trying to rebrand. And we feel, yeah, if, if you dress the part. Yeah. Then I think Hollywood will take us more seriously. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I think we would make great late night hosts. Totally. We're not too niche yeah. at all. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. I yeah. think we're for everybody. Very universal. Yeah. That's yeah. what I have in my pitch deck. Yeah. I have a pie chart and it says everybody. Yeah. Not even a slight, you know. Yeah. There's not even number. a sliver. It's yeah, not yeah. even like a point zero zero three percentage that could be for somebody else. Like, yeah. We're for, we're for like grandmas. We're for, we're for the Midwest. Gen Z. We're for yeah. Midwest. Yeah, yeah. You would think, you know, some people might be close-minded and... You would think so. We have weird names. Yeah. And we have, like, ethnic features and such. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think just our, you know, how dynamic we are. Yeah. And, you know, personable. Yeah. I think it cuts through all that. I just don't think I can laugh like Fallon does. You don't speak ill of my best friend. I have nothing. I Don't get me wrong. One, I'm about to walk off set, and this is my house. Let me give you two things I love about Fallon. One, his hair. Incredible. Immaculate. I've been jealous of his hair. We all have. For years. One, two, I can't do that. Like, he's genuinely... He's a happy guy. I like. I read all the comments, because I watch like all of his... Not all. I watch a lot of the interviews that like some of my few favorite people go on and do. Everyone's like, oh, I can't stand Fallon and his fake laugh. And I'm like, I think it's genuine. It yes, seems. He really is. Genuine. You know, I got to meet him firsthand. Once or twice. Uh, I think once. Just okay. when I did the Tonight right, Show. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. How know was that? I met him. It was pretty cool. What if like that's us catching up? <laughs> you know, it's like this monumentous thing. You go, how was that? I go, it's pretty cool. And we just cool. gloss over it. Cool, cool. Anyways, uh, yeah, pretty dope. <laughs> he but I will say. Yeah, he, did he come in the yes, green room? Or? Consummate professional. Yeah. You know, I brought my parents. They're in the green room, and he comes by. He says hello, and like is very gracious. And oh. he's a big family guy as well. Yeah. You know, so like he thought it was so cool that the parents were there, and he's oh, very sweet. nice yeah. and made it such a great experience for them. Yeah, which is all I really cared about. I only did it for them. Yeah, I didn't yeah. really do it for me. Yeah, I it think... sounds like bullshit. Like I'm not doing the Tonight Show for no, me, no, but it... for real, I wasn't doing it for me. It was just to give that experience for that, them yeah that, that memory to my parents understandable and and i think genuinely to be successful in that arena like for as fallon you have to be that kind of genuinely nice excited like oh i'm happy to see you guys i feel like if i was in that position i i would just be <laughs> you wouldn't even make eye contact with the guys yeah like, uh, so tell me about this new fast and the furious coming out i guess you drive fast <laughs> do you go off a ramp let me, do the physics not make sense in this movie as well? I think that's our selling point. That's the selling point. So, so I was joking. I mean, so much to catch up on. Yeah, yeah. I've had a very Hollywood week. No way. Well, we're about to do, do another Hollywood thing. I'm very Hollywood. Okay, where do I start? Start from the beginning, man. Start from the beginning. So yesterday, I went to the Machine premiere. I don't think that's the start, man. That's not the start? No, that's that's yesterday. That's yeah. the end of the week. Well, that's where my Hollywood week starts. <laughs> Does okay. it have to be a Monday for it to be a Hollywood week? No, 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 no. But it's a real powerhouse Hollywood week, hey, but it starts at the end. I got it. I, okay. Yeah. I understand. I'm yeah, with you. Yeah. Machine. Machine. So we go to the machine premiere. Yeah. And I mean, okay, I'm getting into this ass backwards, but you know, Aristotle went as well. He was right. my plus one. I brought him with me. I'm sure he could have got in on his own, but that's just me doing a Hollywood flex. Like huh? he was my plus one. Right, right, right. He wasn't invited, so he was my first one. But then again, I was his. Pl oh, okay, fuck. Yo, I forgot yeah, one of the. I thought he was. Yo, you okay, were okay, his okay, yeah. plus my, one. I was. I didn't want to say anything. I don't okay, want to blow good. up your spot, you know? <laughs> I mean, that was. that was. I almost was a jabroni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until I caught myself. Okay. So Aristotle brought me to see The Flash. Okay, that's what it CAA, was. At CAA, the agency, to right, do a right. screening, and I saw Very it. Hollywood. Well, Very Hollywood. Very Hollywood. I went to a talent agency to watch the, the, the Flash. Yeah. And then I brought him to see The Machine. The, is it the same dude that. Um, what uh, the flash is that dc film right yeah he With, directed it the uh, no no but the 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 actor is um eliza yeah something whatever the, the individual ezra, that's ezra, ezra, ezra miller. miller same yeah, individual same oh wow yeah okay he's in a lot of hot, he's water, in a lot of hot water but they kept him around okay so that's they had the movie too much hinging on it where they're like okay yeah we've already made too much of this movie let's yeah so okay so that's the movie you watched 
Yeah, so we saw Flash, and then I brought him to the machine screening. Anything exciting? Any? Eh, it was, it was, no, it was a shoulder rubbing oh, shoulders. Supergirl like. was there, so the girl who plays Supergirl in the Flash oh, was at the okay. screening. Right, 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 right. And and uh, and a talent on screen. Actor. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Cool, So cool. she came in. Is like, thanks for coming to the screening. Blah blah blah. And she watched it with everybody. Oh, that's nice. Of her. That's, that's sweet. Cool. Yeah. Oh, who else was there? Uh, Chris Pine was there. What? I mean, Icon. I was just like, yo, yo, Aristotle, Chris Pine. Because, like, he's a fan. He's a Chris Pine fan, too. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah. Is he a Fahim fan? Uh, Chris Pine? Yeah. I don't think he knows I exist. It's I'm just saying, no, Aristotle. Fahim, Aristotle. Uh, will you, you send have, him some of my reels? I, I think, I genuinely think there's so many in, random individuals in the industry that are Fahim fans that maybe we're not aware of. Interesting. But there's more. I mean, I don't need to tell you. You get freaking Questlove posting your shit. That's you got true. you got all these individuals out there, you know. But, yeah, but Questlove is no Chris Pine. But that's well, I, I, I love Amir. I love Questlove. I love Black Thought. So I'm great just guys. Saying, I'm just saying I wouldn't. Miguel, be... throw the pictures up there so the people know. Black Thought, Questlove. Throw in Catherine Narducci just for good measure. She wanted to come to my show what in that? New York, Who's but she couldn't make Catherine? it. Catherine, how did you not gonna make? She's from The Sopranos. Oh, throw, the, throw Tony Soprano up there. Which one's Catherine? She's the, you know, the, the, the chef, the bald chef, oh, yeah, the yeah. wife. Oh, she's in a ton of shit. Yeah, she's yeah, great. She's, she's in, a, yeah. She was in, in some previous stuff uh, prior to the Sopranos. But OK, so you guys see all these people at the sh- at the screening. Chris Pine. Chris Pine. Did you say hello? No, I have so many questions for him. We all do. It's all. But that's the thing. I can't. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Then it sounds like I'm an open mic or something. You know, I'm like, eh, Chris Pine. I'm such a big fan of Star Wars. How would you introduce <laughs> yourself? In these, like, J- the way I did it. I uh, just like, yeah, Chris Pine. <laughs> My voice would even change. Yeah. Chris Pine, I'm such a huge fan. Uh, what was it like? Did you guys play pranks on each other when you did Star Wars? Are you going to keep on doing Star Wars? I hope you do it forever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. What's it like being a zaddy? I was going to ask him how, like, what was the story behind Harry Styles spitting his gum at him? Whoa. Okay. Yo, we're oh, dude, all, we're we all over haven't the place? been together. That's like a Zapruder for... film, right? Do you think he actually did it? There's something going on wait, there. Wait, wait, the, the what? The spitting. Oh, yeah, I saw that video. Do you think it really went down? 100%. Yeah, that's just Hollywood PR. Like, <laughs> we're actually great friends. It just looked like that. Yeah, yeah, The yeah. loogie dripping off my chin uh, uh, was CGI. Someone did in post. That, we're actually best friends. That was, um, did we ever talk about that? We didn't. So much that, to catch up Don't on. Worry Darling, right? Yeah. Asif's sure, in that. Yeah, Asif's in that. But I'm sure we discussed it a year ago. The spitting? Just a whole debacle. I'm sure I gave yeah. you the Hollywood rundown. Oh, maybe a little maybe. bit. Maybe. Anyway, okay, so we're, we're off track. Sure. See Chris Pine. So, I mean, yeah, it was cool. And then I brought, uh, you know, Aristotle to the machine. Now, what is the machine? It's it's uh, Burt Kreischer's feature film. Mm-hmm. It's an adaptation of his infamous story that went viral on the internet, uh, how he was in college taking some, like, Russian-speaking elective, and they went to Russia on a field trip. Oh. So it's like a, a he, reimagining of that oh, in in an action so... comedy form. Peter Atencio uh, directed. Okay. From Key and Peele fame. Right. Keanu fame. Okay, okay. I like uh, Peter Atencio. I think it's Atencio or Atencio. I like his directing style. Okay. Especially on Key and Peele. Yeah. Because me and Aristotle love cinematic sketch. Yeah. And and Peter does that really great too. They do really. So we're well. just fans. Yeah. Oh, but the movie great was great, man. You know, like yeah. the premiere was great because I've been to Hollywood premieres. Everyone has. I mean, that sounds so douchey. Everyone's been to a Hollywood premiere. Everyone I don't been- need to tell you guys. You've been on the red carpet. It's stuffy. This was not that. Bert, I heard him describe it because he was like, yeah, I'm going to have the premiere and my friend's going to be there. He's like, no, you come later. You come after everybody. You're the star. And he goes, I don't want to do that shit like i want to see my friends and i thought that was really cool because sometimes there's a way of doing things and it's been that way forever yeah but bert just like i want to i want it to be a hang i want it to be like a tailgate party i want it to be fun and a celebration so he was like saying hi to everybody yeah and he's the star of the movie you know it's like really down-to-earth guy and uh yeah, there was like food. There was um, like axe throwing. Oh, nice. All the comics were there too. Whoa. So it was like hanging out in the comedy store. Like Santino was there. Um, yeah, Aristotle, Pauly, uh, Tom Segura was, was there. This, where was this held? It was at? in Westwood. Oh, okay, okay. You know where they do premieres yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Fox Theater. So it was Theater. a fun hang for like an hour, hour and a half. But where would all this in. axe throwing thing go down? I think it's like a little part of the street that they had kind of blocked off. Oh, and it was just a fun hang like for Like right a in bit. front of like Dee Dee Reese and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. So then uh, then we watched the movie and 
it's really good. Is and it? this isn't just me because I'm a comic and yeah. it's a great movie. And I think it's just all the comics were talking about it on the way on the walk to the after party. Yeah. Just like how it's like surprising how good it's great. You yeah. know what I mean? Because we've had some comics have had swings, you know. Yeah. But I think this is probably the most successful one. Mm. And Bert's a great actor, you know. Oh, he plays himself. Yeah, he plays he plays himself. He's a stand up in it. It's like a really great kind of slightly it's it's an honest and slightly different adaptation of his life and, yeah. and like a reimagining of, you know, yeah. if that were to come up present day. But I think it's just really good for stand up, we were saying, because Hollywood has taken a departure from stand ups in terms of like traditional Hollywood. Mm-hmm. We've done it's been a boom for specials. Yeah. It's been great, but like we haven't really been plugged in to like acting in movies mm-hmm. like it used to back in the day. You yeah. know, they used to like Jim Carrey, um, Sick, they Eddie Murphy, sitcoms and movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like we were like plugged in super easily. Yeah, yeah. And then we kind of went away from that. And I think this may be a re-entry okay, into I that. So. And I and I, I okay, this is my hypothesis. A lot of us comics are hypothesizing this. The podcast community and like the stand-up MCU, like Rogan. Um, you know, Tom Segura, Burt, Tim Dillon, Santino, Bobby Lee, Theo. This podcast universe is just like ripe for talent mm. and porting them to the movies. Hopefully. Right. That's what we think, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. I think if this does well, then it can act as a bridge mm-hmm. sort of like to give these guys shots and and to open up the door more so for stand-up comedians. Okay, okay. Because, uh, you know, comedies have kind of gone by the wayside with traditional... You think so? Yeah, they always get injected into Marvel stuff. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, like back cameos. in the day, there was American Pie, uh, Hangover, like all these iconic like comedy movie experiences yeah, yeah. that don't exist anymore. It's that anymore. mid-budget blockbuster yes, that's been dead. taken out. It's yeah. dead. It, maybe it goes to streamers now yeah or like you know uh it's just fun. tv shows yeah i just i i don't know man they there's just i have an issue with that because even whatever's like whatever's a netflix production it's just not leaning into comedy it's just leaning into old like 2000s tropes and it's nothing's i don't I have it's hard to find something that's original that's genuinely funny laugh out loud funny original well you know what the tr- the trouble is is that uh I think with Twitter existing, there are so many more um, arrows pointed at these corporations yeah. when it comes to comedy. Like they don't want to get flamed by woke Twitter. They don't want to yeah. get flamed by conservative Twitter. They don't want to get flamed by like LGBT plus Twitter. I think they're going like, don't get me wrong. I like to consider myself somewhat socially conscious, sure. you know, of uh, but everyone has a voice. Yeah, no one had a voice in the eighties. Nobody had a voice in the nineties. Yeah, 90s. yeah. And you know, I and I don't mean to sound like uh, uh, a conspiracy or like a anti wokeist. Sure. But I think a lot of these companies are just yeah, man. Like fuck them. They're just trying to. They're pandering. That's what I think. They're well, pandering it's, to it's woke art culture. by committee. Yeah, and it's look, like again, art by focus group. Yeah. Um. And because like, all right, so this is my issue, right? And I think uh. We were briefly talking about this a couple months ago with uh, when we, um, I was watching Wednesday, yeah, right, and a lot of these conglomerates, Netflix, uh, HBO, or, or Max now or whatever, they make these shows and they just want to throw in buzzwords like they're not j- like I don't think any of them are sincere. I don't think it's just pandering to like wokest quote unquote you know to be like. A conversation's happening. It's like, uh, don't gaslight me. Oh, and I'm I've like, heard that. And it shows hip. Yeah, and it's like, whoa, whoa, I've heard that term. Like, let's unpack this. What, like, it's not even used in the right context. The the term gaslighting. It had like, I feel like they're just trying to throw in buzzwords to be like, ah. Do you think anybody like puts their legs behind their head and goes like, this is gaslighting? <laughs> that's next. That's Honest, for my yeah. next like uh, no, road bro, trip comedy. That's that I'm a patriarchy, do. man. That's a patriarchy. A and th- they'll just throw in like misogyny, patriarchy, uh, gas. And I'm like, hey, if you want to like genuinely address these topics, that would be fantastic. But just to throw that word in there, just to, it, I feel like it's like a wink at the camera to be like, hey, we did it. We got it in there. Yeah. Or we, we're short, on Twitter. It's a shortcut to like hippify the yeah. content. Yeah. Like, I know what year it is. Yeah. We're using gaslighting. And it's just like, I, I, it's a wink at Twitter. Like we're we're on Twitter. We're aware, you know. So I just think it's hard for comedy 
in in when yeah. when it's like a big production because yeah they don't want to get lit up by all these twitter all that yeah, yeah. trending because it's so easy to hit a third rail yeah and then also you're never going to get to be as funny as someone on the internet with no vested interest yeah. you know what i mean like if if you're on snl you're on whatever you have all these corporate sponsorships you have internet all these people that you have to appease yeah whereas if you're just a dude who uploads a thing on instagram or meme. tiktok yeah you're beholden to nobody. Yeah. The internet will always be infinitely funnier than whatever you can do in cinema or TV. You can still get, there's some like cool high production stuff that you can do within TV and in, in cinema. But in terms of like just funny for funny, uh, you can't touch the internet. I love that. That's a, that's a great soundbite right there. But you can't you, touch the internet guys. It's a hundred percent true. I'll watch dude. Some ridiculous 14-year-old will make an edit on TikTok that will have me in tears yeah, yeah. at like 2 a.m., you know? Um, or like you'll just see a meme on Twitter and you're just like, this is like the funniest shit I've ever seen. Yeah, you know? It's almost like crowdsourcing comedy as well. There are yeah. so many funny people yeah. In, yeah, yeah. in the world and the internet just gives everybody a, a funny people a voice. Yeah. So you did two screenings and then what's, yeah. what's your other... Day. Well, the thing why we're so dressed why up. Why we're so dressed up? Yeah, we're going to Jason Nash's fiftieth birthday party. Oh, it's his fiftieth. Happy birthday, Jason! Happy birthday! I'll see you in a little bit. Oh, wait, was... this is the past. It was a great party. It Thanks for having great. us. Thank you for allowing me to crash it. Ollie Baluch is my plus one. I'm his plus one. Um, so in a situation like this, yeah. where you're in, uh, like an event where you're meeting new people, mm -hmm. are you like, hi, I'm Fahim. I'm a stand-up comedian. No, not at all. Well, if someone's like, oh, uh, so what do you do? Because that's a question everyone asks. Yes. So yeah, uh, yeah. what do you do? I say none of your fucking business. And then I headbutt them. Yeah. That usually ends it pretty. <laughs> all right. I will. Can I film it tonight? Yeah, please. Okay. Do vertical. Because like course. last time you did horizontal. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. And yeah. no one really does it anymore. And I did horizontal and widescreen. So you're just like super tiny. Yeah, and it was just tiny. wide. Yeah. Yeah. Comedy plays. Yeah, close up. In a close up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I got you. All right. I mean, I'm not uh, working the room. You're my plus one. Right. That that should be very indicative as the way I am, you know? Like, I'm not going to go <laughs> solo what? to the... Excuse me? Like, it's terrifying <laughs> for me to just go to this party yeah, 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 solo. Yeah. Not really. I mean, I know Jason, but he's the man of the hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's going to be, he's, you know... He's mingling and... He's glad-handing everybody around, so... Yeah. I'm just gonna be by myself in the corner, so I need a life preserver. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm that guy. Yeah, man, I'm a great. But like, what if you ditch me? I go this motherfucker, and you're just, you're just like handing out business cards and shit. Hey, uh, if you, Ali Baluch, if you ever need me, uh, if you need a pitch, I'm here. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but like, all right, let's say I ditch you. Yeah. Someone comes up. Oh, uh, great party. Uh, oh, my name is uh Tom, and you're like, hey, what's uh, up, Tom? Fahim. Uh, so Fahim, what do you do? I'm uh stand up. Stand up's my main thing. Is that what so sometimes, that's what sometimes you I say. write, sometimes I act. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I say stand up's my main thing. You're not like I'm um, like oh I'm a writer. No, because I mean, because I know that's not what you are. Yeah. But I feel like when you're in these like, do you think that stops industry the things? It's like, is that like me saying I'm an engineer in Ubers to stop the conversation? That's if you want to, but a writer. <laughs> you know, saying I'm a writer in Hollywood is the same thing as saying I'm an engineer in an Uber. Like, I feel like I'm a writer uh, ends the conversation quicker than I'm a stand-up comedian. Is it? No, no, no. Now, like, let's be a little, let's be a little pretentious for the listeners. Please. We're dressed apart. So, yeah, why not? <laughs> for Dress the, for the attitude for you For the want. listeners who can't, uh, who don't see us, we're just in sports coats you know, and We're in, like, some serious downs. Zara gear. Yeah. It's Zara City up in here. Are you Zara? Uh, what do you got? Uh, <laughs> Lululemon? <laughs> no, Lululemon. You're wearing athleisure. Your pants are athleisure. Yes, they are. Chinos, bro. I can't bring you now. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, just, and then yeah. Topshop. Okay. Well, now so they got a ASOS. Frankenstein going on. Yeah. And then I think I think this might be Zara. I can't I can't tell. Nice. Yeah. This might be H and M actually. That's me reaching down a bit. Zara is kind of upper crust H and M. Okay. I have a f I, I yo yo with my weight, mm. and I found out why today. Why? I'll tell you later. Oh, uh, we and, can't and know. No, 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 no. Like, it, it, it'll, is it a thyroid issue? No, no, no. It'll lead into the the, the podcast. Ah, yeah, gotcha. It's, it's okay. coming up. It's, so later, it's, so long as it's, it's an, part of this. It's his own segment. You know? Nice. Okay, it's called yo yoing with the yo yoing. Yo yoing with, with Ali. Yeah, yo yoing with Ali. <laughs> um. Okay. So the pretentious part. Yes. Would you be like, hey, uh, my name is uh, Fahim. Oh, Fahim, what do you do? Uh, I'm a writer at Warner Brothers. 
Well, that's not true anymore. Well, I mean, sure. Mm. You want me to bend? You want me to just like yeah. be, be delusional? Yeah, just uh, bend the truth a bit. Uh, but I feel like I'm successful with honesty. Like, you know what I mean? Like being honest. But it's is... Hollywood. Interesting. I lie all the time. Really? Yeah. But what do I have to gain by saying I'm a writer at Warner Brothers? And the conversation to continue. Mm. Yeah. Because if you're like, I'm a writer, it's like every fucking asshole in LA is a writer and they'll walk right. away. Right. More a writer at Warner Brothers, there's the credibility, the like respect, like, oh, Warner Brothers, how's the strike affecting you? You know what's interesting is saying I'm a writer at Warner Brothers sounds, it doesn't sound too put upon. But if I say, I'm a stand-up comedian who's done The Tonight Show, people are like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Yeah. But I'm a writer at Warner Brothers. That Warner Brothers is unnecessary information. Yeah. But uh, it's almost like... um, mentalism where they accept you saying warner brothers yeah even, even though it was an unnecessary flex yeah, yeah you, you didn't have to but there's no stand-up way of doing that you just have to say i, I do stand up that's what they, and they think you're a crazy person yeah exactly. started a week ago exactly you could be doing it at a laundromat and yes. like north hollywood mm-hmm. you know which is a great gig i'm still trying to you're trying, trying, trying to get on it yeah I, I i think i know the guy you know the guy i know the guy who <laughs> you owns know the, the, laundromat. the laundromat <laughs> yeah <laughs> not the guy who books the show <laughs> If you do enough laundry, yeah, yeah, they'll let you do a tight five. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> or, yeah, they'll let you do the last ten minutes of your load because you have to do a load. Yeah, yeah, that's how that's how you get in. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> instead of a two drink minimum, it's like a two load minimum. <laughs> yeah, you got to come in. Batches. You, have, you have to stop the the set short. You're like, oh no, I forgot to separate. <laughs> yeah, my clothes. Oh, they're delicate. That's with my time. That's funny. Um, what were we saying? Yeah, so it's it's unnecessary information. Yeah. But yeah, if you do say, I'm just a stand-up. Yeah. yeah, it's nothing. Yeah. Like, dude, I stopped working at HBO Max two years ago. Wait, Max. Well, at Get the time, right. at the time it was HBO okay. Max. You should say, you know, I was working at Max. At the time, HBO Max. Yeah. Formerly known as Formerly known as HBO. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'll still bring it up like as if that writing assistant gig didn't end to in two thousand twenty one. Right. 2021, 2021, I'm a writer, 20, I don't I'm know. A writer at Warner Brothers. Yeah. I write for CBS. And even when I flex like my current job, I'm like, if I say I'm a producer, everyone's out here. Everyone out in Los Angeles is a producer, producer at MTV. And then everyone just assumes ridiculousness because it's the, That's own, the only program. And I'm like, why don't they change the name of the network to just like ridiculousness? Should just, they should change it to Rob Deerdeck. Shout out to yeah. Rob Deerdeck. I'm your race boss, you know? Um, but anyway, okay, so that's where we're going. That's next. where we're going, and I think that is that'll put a cap on the Hollywood week. Yeah, that's that. That'll be a unless something pops up. And that's the beauty of L.A. Where tomorrow's not planned. I'm assuming you got oh my nothing. God, I can go to another premiere, maybe. But you can just be relaxing, watching TV, and you get a text like, "Hey, come through here." Right, and then who knows where your night will go? You can end up. Yeah, that's the beauty of. Los Angeles, you know? Yeah. So it's a great town, guys. It's a great town. I'm sure you could do that in New York, but I'd rather sure. do it in LA. Yeah. I don't you know, New York's fun. Yeah. But I've never lived there for a long time. I've Same. always visited. Same. I, I just enjoy the late night cruises from like one party to another and it's like mm-hmm. one AM and you're like, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know who's gonna be at this party, but I'm invited. So. I do like that you could just, all you gotta do is transport your body. Yeah. That's kinda cool. Yeah. And it's just like driving on those empty roads. Oh, like you're driving hills. in New York? No, no, no I'm talking here. Oh, LA, okay, okay. LA, 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 LA. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like you're just driving. I also like my car, though. Through the hills. I just like chilling. I love driving, dude. I love driving, too. Yeah. Right? I got back. I was out of I was out of town for like the last few months. And when I got back, the first thing I did was just drive. I just got in my car. I missed where, my where car. Where to, dude? I just drove around the valley. I went... uh on the holland i took the canyons down to like the valley and blah 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 and it was like 1 a.m and i'm just cruising no purpose no purpose no direction i'm just like m- windows down sunroof open like music scene in a movie possibly you have the drive soundtrack and you're just doing some deep thinking no i had a um, you know what i got into before i left la what miami vice the show Bro. phil collins so i'm you know driving a phil collins i can feel it is it calling or coming in the air? I don't know. I can, uh, I can feel it coming. In I think it's coming. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um. So, yeah. So the yo-yo in. 
Pl- oh yeah, here we go. It's a segment. <laughs> Yo-yoing so, with Ali Baluch. Yo-yoing with Ali Baluch. So for many years, mm-hmm. dude, I will take a bite out of like a, a chip, a candy bar. I'll drink water and I'm just pregnant. Like right. I'm bloated. Mm. I'm like five months, gotcha. you know? Yeah. People rub my belly. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So I never, I just assumed that I just have a shitty diet because I eat junk food left and right. So I never thought about it. And then recently I started eating clean mm-hmm. and I'm like, yo, I'll, all I'm doing is taking like a bite out of like a tiny bite out of like a Snickers bar and I'm like uncomfortably bloated. So what's going on here? So yeah, I'm like, what's going on here? You know, or go to my doctors. I do some like hormone test. I'm like, maybe it is mm-hmm. my thyroid. Check. Thyroids are normal. I'm like, oh, maybe it's my cortisol levels, my hormones. My hormones, fairly normal. Tipped up. And then I'm on TikTok. TikTok. Best doctor in the world. The motherfucking algorithm at TikTok mm-hmm. knows me. And it's someone's like, yeah, well, I experienced this and I got tested for this thing called SIBO. Uh, I don't know what SIBO stands sure. for. And I'm like, okay. Let me book an appointment with my GI. Mm-hmm. Um, I go and we do all first. We're like, all right, maybe it's blah, blah, blah. So we're doing all these like spend a week eating this like diet, spend a week doing this. And then after a while, I'm like, yo, let me just get this thing tested. Yeah. So I go get tested. Long story short, they get me blown into these bags. Like, <laughs> like I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm sitting for two hours in a room with three other four other guys and we're just sitting there and the doctor comes in he's like blowing this bag so they, they triple up on this experiment <laughs> yeah they just like expedite it's like it. uber pool for yeah this for examination yeah. Huh, okay <laughs> so i'm sitting in there and then the doctor walks in blowing this bag all right he walks out all right comes in 20 minutes later blowing this bag and i'm like happens for two and a half hours yeah i'm sitting there for two and a half hours with these other random guys. Sure. Anyway, turns out I got my results. I got SIBO. So it's like a uh, in, intestinal bacteria that just causes bloating. Oh. And it doesn't process things. All you need is some couple antibiotics. And then... Cleared up? I should be normal. And I've been suffering for like years. Whoa. Like 2016-ish. This bacteria has been living rent-free. Rent-free. In, rent your free in my tum-tum. You're, ev- <laughs> you're, you're evicting them? I'm a victim this mother, you know. So you're a you're a slum lord, huh? You know, you don't care about squatters' rights. Sometimes it's ethical to. Where's he gonna live? Ev- um, in my toilet in the in what the, the drain. fuck? Actually, I don't know how it works. They're they gonna said, kill him. They said I got gas too. You got gas. Certain types of gas, it's too prominent. Interesting. They sent me a whole graph. I didn't so, understand. So you take it. the antibiotics. I don't know and, what happens. And then are you good? Uh, yeah, I think. Or does it come back and you got to do it again? So that's the thing. If you don't take care of the root cause, which I don't know what the root cause is. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Um, then it can come back. Interesting. But I have faith that it won't come back. Sure. Once you leave Baluch, you don't come back. Right. Yeah. So that was um that was my week. What of, a discovery, man. Yeah, man. I'm happy for you. So now I can find because you remember how I'd always tell you I don't own suits. Oh yeah. Like I always return all yes, of my suits. Yes, yeah. Because of this, like one day I'm like, oh, I fit into this slim fit suit. Next, like a month later, I'm like, this it won't even button, you know, and it would just always yo yo. Ali ballooning. So should have um, been Ali ballooning. I should that <laughs> should be my last name. Uh, I should change it. Ali, Ali balloon baluch. Ali, Ali ballooned. Um. Well, I'm happy for you. I'm glad you got to yeah, man. It. And it's one of those things where you get the result and you're like, you're just happy Finally. it's positive. Because I'm like, was crazy. yeah, exactly. You know, for my, I'm not a hypochondriac, but I'm sure. But you were being gaslit by bacteria. I was being gaslit by bacteria, man. <laughs> That's me being trendy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing what the, the yeah. streamers do. You're doing what Netflix is doing, you know, just sprinkling it in there, you know, just letting Twitter know that Boom. you're on Twitter. Um, but. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know why I'm promoting this right now, but I have a show in L.A., The Bourbon Room. Okay. June 27th, guys. Ooh. Come. If you've already seen me do the hour, don't come because <laughs> it's that touring hour. Yeah, it's fun, though. Like, I've come to see Whoa. you do the same set, like, you know. Yeah. And it's still funny every time. Hey, thanks. It, because I thanks, think friend. I don't know if it's you. It is. It's a combination. It can't be me. <laughs> <laughs> give me too much credit. It, it can't be me. Yeah, it can't possibly be me. Uh, it, it's a combination of Fahim and it's like the energy of the room. Mm. If the energy's alive, it just makes the laugh infectious. Yeah. You know? I'm very much, uh, it's the song and dance of the audience and the performance, and I'm entertained by the audience, even, you know? So it's like, I don't know. Like, 
I think I, I perform differently on what a crowd gives me. If, if they're having the time of their life, it's like so much more fun for me yeah, too. Yeah, and yeah. then you just kind of like give what you get. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Um, I remember like in our earlier episodes, we were talking about life hacks, you know, mm. like small little life hacks that yeah. we do this and that. I've come upon one that I've been doing recently. Please. Parking validation That's all okay. around the country, not even just LA, but like I've d- been doing this in DC. Yeah. So, you know, parking sucks everywhere. Right. I have an AMC Stubbs Pass. So I pay like 24 bucks a month. I get three free movies a week. It's a lot. It's a lot. Sometimes I don't even hit up sure. one movie a week. Yeah. Some weeks I hit up like all three and I... That's just good value. Yeah. It's, and we're not even sponsored by it. We're not even sponsored by it If yet. you would like to, AMC, please hit us up. Our email We'd is We'd love there. to make money off of What's raving the email about that you. They can- or dance hour at gmail.com. It's not even for the sponsors. It's for sponsors and for you. So okay. the listeners. So finish the life hack. So anyway, um, I'll go somewhere. Like, for example, I'll use the one I did in D.C. I was in Georgetown. Saturday, my family wanted to, like, take a little ferry boat on the Potomac River. Mm-hmm. Parking in D.C. is insane. Hard to find street. Impossible to find street parking. And if you want to park in a garage, you're paying, like, 20 bucks an hour. Some, like, ridiculous rate. But. There's an AMC right by the ferries. Parked there, took the boat ride, this and that. All I did was use my free ticket. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I was in there and I watched this movie and I just show them my my stub on my phone. They validate my ticket. So even, okay, so you came back six hours later or whatever. You just yeah. said you were going to a movie that's as close to you leaving. Yeah. And then you get validated. Yeah. So you're paying. Oh, it's already, you're already paying for it. I already paid for it. It's already part of my monthly payment, you know? And I did that at the group. Zoom in on my face here. Zoom in on Fahim. This is my mind <laughs> being blown. I did that. So yeah. that's like a movie hack and parking hack all in one. Yeah, I guess. I bu- I believe so. Come yeah. on. Um, I did that at the Grove because the Grove is very stingy about parking now. Interesting. Like, you know, but, you know, whenever I validate sometimes. All right. This has always been my hack at like Century City Mall or at the Grove. And this is very LA specific. So if like five of our listeners that live in LA do this, that's fine. Yeah. You know, take this advice. Um, every time I'm like at the mall or I'm at the Grove or whatever, um, I'll walk in and just be like, oh, I left my ticket in the car. Can I validate? Nine times out of 10, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go. Like validates right back there. Yeah. Not an issue. Culver City back there used to be an arc light downtown Culver City. You used to do that all the time. I used to have dinner there. Just be like, oh, I, you know, yeah. Now they crack down. Every once in a while, they'll like give you a hard time. So then I'll go and get a movie, and then I'll, you know, validate my ticket. Pretty slick. Thank you, man. That's one of my. Uh, you know, current. that could even work even if you don't have the Stubbs program. You could just buy a movie ticket, and that's probably cheaper than possible. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it'll be cheaper, but sometimes. Ah, but then you gotta wait it out. Yeah, right? but sometimes some validations only like reduce the price so sometimes it, it's a gamble sure. you got to know where you're what you're doing okay this isn't as good as your hack no. but i discovered an app called spot hero okay and that's like prepaid parking if you're going to a concert or something or a game you can just like put in the location of it and it'll tell you garages around town and it gives you a qr code and you just drive in do it and it's usually a lot cheaper than if you drove there trying to find lots dude that's actually incredible. pretty dope yeah so it gives you the address so you're not driving around aimlessly. You could see how far it is from the venue. Oh, that's good. I've used it, I've used it a few times. I was actually gonna go to that Lakers game on um, on Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I ended up not going, but the whole ish dilemma was I don't want to go to the Staples Center and find parking. Sure. Like that's the thing I'm just I just dread I'm trying to leave an event after you know. Yeah. I don't like I don't like being like. I get it. Stuck in that traffic for like 20 minutes in a garage. You I know. get it, dude. Yeah. Um, do you have a jabroni? Uh, but I have, I have yeah. a, I have a jabroni story, please. But this is a long story. All right, hit us. If you, if you, if, if you want to hear it, okay. It, there's some. It's a roller coaster. All right. Oh man, where do I begin? Ramadan. <laughs> Great beginning. <laughs> the great, the, you know, you can't get better of a story with that. Sure. Doesn't start with Ramadan. So a lot of like Muslims, like they'll like they eat at night, right? So uh-huh. on the weekends they like to like 
do events late at night. So this one mosque, because I was visiting my family on the East Coast, I'm not gonna just say where because sure. I have I've made enemies at these places. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. So one of these mosques are hosting a dodgeball game, I'd like a do- like late night midnight dodgeball thing, you know, on like after a, hours. Yeah, literally dodgeball game. Yeah, who hasn't? So I just it it comes across on Instagram, and I'm like, you know, I have like it's like a team of ten. I'm like, I got ten cousins. You roll deep. And I'm going to sign up for this. So I sign up. I don't even, I don't go to this mosque. It's not my community. I don't know the people there. So I'm like, I'm just going to go to this place. And I hit up all my cousins. There's 10 Afghans. So, and we're all like, we're, we're old. Like to these people, we're old men, you know, like yeah. these. So we roll up and I tell everyone the night before or like the day of them. Like, hey, when we roll up, can everyone just like wear black, wear black hoodie, black track pants. Let's just look like a team, you know, let's just be. <laughs> uniform uh-huh. even if it's like like you know a black t-shirt and a black hood, whatever just right. let's all be in black so uh we get there and it's all fucking kids <laughs> it's all children it's like 18 year olds 19 year old 20 year olds you know so they obviously pit us with like the older guys so there's like a team of like older men like guys that are a little bit like middle-aged fathers that are trying to like be you have a lot to lose yeah oh and uh I ask each and like all my friends and cousins that are a part of this just individually. I'm like, what do you want the team name to be? And I ask everyone and everyone just happened unanimously to be like, let's be the Afghans. I'm nice. like, great word play. I'm like, okay, great that, pun. Yeah. I'm like, that's fine. We're the Afghans. What about Afghans with like a Z at the end? Oh, we should have done that. One, right? Yeah. Or is that too promoting nah. gun violence? Afghans. Hey, today I was at the shooting range. Pew, pew. Were you? Yeah. yeah downtown. Whoa. Gun who club. is this guy? Uh, you want to go one day? I've never shot in a gun. No way. Is it shot or shot? You never shot a gun? Guys, is it America? shot a gun or shot in a gun? Or shot it? Shot it? No, I'm kidding. I don't know. Shot it. <laughs> that uh, sounds like how T paints. You never shot. went with like Joe Rogan or anything when you were in Texas? No. Oh, okay. That's my dream, just to eat sliced jalapenos and elk meat and do bow, bow hunting. <laughs> <laughs> that should be like a billionaire sort of excursion. Yeah. If you do like a charity fundraiser. They could probably raise two billion dollars if the prize was to go bow hunting, yeah, and eat elk meat with Joe, yeah. and do like a uh, a cold plunge. Jeff Bezos would pay two billion dollars. They they would people would sign up for like, that. That'd be, so, that'd be so fucking cool. You know, for our listeners that are repulsed at this gun talk, I just want to let them know you felt like God. No, mm. I wish. No, I'm fine. Um, hold on, is my form good? Listeners, I'm cupping my gun hand with my bottom hand. Yeah. This is just me for what I've gathered from TV and film and video games. Yeah, that's is, all is you how need. it is. Yeah, yeah. You're and then good. if I have a flashlight, I do this. Yeah, there you go. I hold I, it sideways. I've watched now. enough Resident Evil. Yeah. Just the... What kind of gun were you shooting? Uh, this this time I chose a Beretta because I we grew up in the '90s. Mm. We all those movies were the face off, the double oh, gun. Yeah. You know, Beret John Woo. Films. What's your favorite gun to shoot? Um. Okay, so I'll be honest. I've been going for many years. I don't work on target. I just go to shoot. It's like a like yeah, a that's release. That's your stress ball. Yeah, honestly. That's well, cool. anyway, anytime. Well, I have I you know I have guests that come in and out all the time. I have a right now. Is this part of the Ali Baluch? Yeah. Uh, stop. Yeah, Express? yeah. So a lot of times I'll have friends from like Europe visit. Like lo- right now I have a guest from London. She's never touched a gun, seen a gun. So I'm like, well, if you're in America, might as well, <laughs> might as well yeah. shoot a gun. First we'll have apple pie. Yeah. And then we'll go to the range. Yep. And that's pretty much the American yeah. experience. Then you've done, you've seen it and done it all. Yeah. And then afterwards, we watch a stand up comedy show. Yeah. And I'll be like, Fahim, you up? You know? That's cool. Do you know? I thought about it today. It's been ten years. Yeah. Since like I started the tours. Going? Yeah. Yeah. You really should get a bus. And because like, because it's like clockwork. Yeah. Because I'm like a hop on, hop for off. For ten years, I, I've been coming to the comedy store mm-hmm. just to see, like we'll come in and the guy would be like, "Yeah, Fahim's about to go up in like three minutes." I'm like, "All right, we'll wait outside." I'm like, "All right, he's going in, guys. Get in, get in, get in." <laughs> I love how you just bring like, you bring him for ten minutes, yeah, and then you bounce, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very specific because it's, it's if almost I, surgical, yeah, you, like. <laughs> Are they ever like, hey, we want to see the rest of the show? Sometimes. Sometimes. Be, you go, no, 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 yeah, no, no, no. We don't do that. Uh, we see for him and yeah. we leave. There are times I'll look at the um lineup. The, set, the lineup and I'll be like, 
all right, we'll go a little early because I want to see these other comedians. And I'm like, oh, we'll leave right oh, at, you know. Ali yeah. has discerning. He's got yeah. he's got his favorites. I, I'm, I'm, I don't even know, like, who you stay for. Yeah. But don't tell me. I won't, I won't. I won't. I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah. You know. But uh, no, but it's crazy. For 10 years, we've been coming. And, and these, I'm dude, over the 10 years, how many people have, I don't, I can't even count. Like, it's just been like a revolving door of people every other week just coming in to see Fahim. They come, they see, they follow. I like, whoa, what if like my growth is all attributed to you bringing people in one by one? Look, man, I ain't trying to take all the credit. Some boy, of it, you dude. know, I did bring in at least 150, is, 50 people at least. Is 90% of the map again? <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I'll bring in the it's a good demo. Yeah. Um, but they actually all want to see you specifically. Why? So they're like, oh, is Fahim performing? Because they like your stand-up. I yeah, don't know. Nice. <laughs> anyway, uh, where was that, I? That's very cool. Yeah, we should have been the Avguns, you know? Avguns. But oh, anyways. Yeah, Avguns. So we're Avguns, whatever. I don't really think of much of it. So this guy comes up, and he's like in traditional Islamic clothing, you know, mm-hmm. inside the mosque. And he was like, hey, what's your... Uh, and he's like this tough guy. He's this like tough dude in the mosque. Yeah. It's a Muslim tough guy. And sure. he's like, hey, uh, uh, what's your team name? And I was like, uh, we're the Avguns. And he's like, I don't like that. And he just like turns around and walks away. And I'm like, okay. And then the whistle blows. And again, we're playing fathers. Right. These are like middle-aged men. We're, we're playing. Whistle blows. Boom. Five minutes. Like less than five minutes. These guys are out. We win the game. We were like. And then in that moment, we realize we're Globo Jim. We are the villains <laughs> of dodgeball. <laughs> what about the kids, though? What about when you hit the kids? So that was the thing. And then we play another older team. Mm-hmm. And then now we're stuck with the youth. And the youth, I'm saying like 18 to like 22-year-olds. That's prime, though. You got LeBrons. Yeah. You got... And I'm like a, a 33-year-old man. My cousin has three kids. He's like 37, you know? Like Is there a lot of Theragun therapy going on just we, in between Yeah, sets, we're just like... Just your yeah. ice baths, <laughs> getting ready to go in again. So everyone's eyeballing us like... Who are these like who dudes are these, in who are these superstars? Who are these old ass who are these men? Dodgeball superstars. <laughs> these dodgeball villains. We're like these old men in all black, and we're all sitting in a corner because we don't know these people. That's not our community. Yeah, you didn't you know? come to make friends. Yeah, and I don't go to you this came to mosque. win the championship. Exactly. We're not. And then uh, throughout the games, we notice the younger kids, they're cheaters. How so? During the holy month of Ramadan, these little rats want to cheat. They'll get hit clear as day. They get hit. And they're like, I didn't get hit. Liars. What are you talking about? I didn't. Get, I'm not Did gonna you have instant replay or no. Nah, man. I wish. They'll throw a ball. We'll catch it. Dodgeball rules. If you catch the ball, you're out. They go. You the other, it. the person who threw it is out. We caught the ball, and he's like, uh, he didn't catch the ball. Uh, I uh, no. And I'm like, so there's this one dude. I walk into the, I walk into the the gym where we're we're doing this. Like the night starts and this guy's just doing push ups in the middle of like the gym yeah, mind games. I and it. I was like, fuck this guy. I, I didn't I don't know who he is. I've never seen him. A guy that's just trying to play main character energy mm-hmm. and just do push ups in front of him. I was like, fuck I'm aiming for this guy. So we aim for him. We're playing his team. He gets hit clear as day. Everyone who's watching, fifty kids are watching, fifty people are watching. He's like, I didn't get hit. I was like, okay, this is where I need to. I, I'm not. I stopped. I'm like, I'm not continuing till this dude's out of the game. And then Stand. I, cr- they said I crossed the f- actual line. I, cr- uh. I went on their side. <laughs> and then tensions escalated. Yeah, things got at the mosque. At the mosque, bro. Well, the the thing is, have you ever played with Afghans? You play like volleyball or grown up soccer, uh. any kind of. It's just it's the nature of the game. We just get in your, we just get in your face. We're passionate people. We're passionate people. And after the game's over, it's all love. It's like all love. it's never personal. Yeah. You know, so things are getting really heated. Like we're get people are coming face to face. And then that guy who asked our team name r- walks up aggressively and he's like, You all a bunch of weirdos. Whoa. This guy's the jabroni of the week, by the way. I was like, look, man. You don't, don't say, you don't say the W word. Like, I was like, you're, I don't know. It was just, I mean, obviously when people are listening to this, someone calling you a weirdo is not that. But in the heat of the moment where everyone's like yelling at you and this random guy comes up. He's who, too random to he's be too random. saying all this and shit. And he's too much of a wannabe tough guy. Anyway, so that's my jabroni of the week. We ended up winning the whole tournament. 
Water under the bridge. They were like, everyone was rooting. Like, we played multiple games. Everyone was rooting for the other team. The, the other team knocked one of us out. <sighs> there was an eruption. We have video. It's like an eruption. The second we, like, knocked them out, it's like, oh, man, fucking guys. You, you guys are juggernauts. You're like an yeah. all-star team. So You're it's the like, Monstars. It's a, yeah, imagine, like, the Monstars or, like, Globo Gym from Dodgeball just mm -hmm. winning, though. You know? <laughs> like, the Dream Team doesn't win. Sponge, uh, the Looney Tunes don't win. The villains That's a pretty good win. jabroni. Yeah. Anyway, so that was my jabroni. And I thought about him on my drive. I was like, yeah, fuck that guy. I can't That's wait a... to talk about this motherfucker. Yeah, he's a jabroni. Even though I'm sure we were the villains, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I can't go back to that mosque. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to be like 86 from a mosque. Dude, we literally like had to like rush out of there because we're like, if they're going to try to start a fight in the house of God. Oh, man. I don't know. Do I have a jabroni? This is tough. I don't have a clear cut jabroni like you do. No, nah, I mean jabronis come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, I mean this is, this is like so slight compared to yours. Yours had a whole. Hey, look, we we, uh, we are different weeks. Some weeks you got like a major jabroni. Some weeks you got a minor jabroni. You I know? got a minor jabroni. That's fine. This is a minor to medium jabroni. Okay. So I'm in Westwood. I'm trying to walk to Bert's premiere. Yeah. And there's a place where you enter. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a side of the street. Yeah. It's it's kind of the middle. So, but it's between a crosswalk. So I'm on the corner and I can just like walk over to, to where the entry is. Yeah. Yeah. But there's this security guy who's like, you can't, you can't do that. You have to cross the street, go across and then come this way. And then, so I basically have to do a full rectangle to get to where I can get in like three steps. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you can't. And then it turns, you know, the walk. So everyone's walking and then just cuts across because it's dumb to yeah. do what he said. He's like, guys, you guys, you can't. But there were so many people doing it. And yeah. he was, he, he couldn't, uh, he couldn't he, stop he had everyone. no power. Yeah. So that was just kind of jabroni -ish. Did you end up doing what you wanted to do or did you go the long Pretty way? Pretty much. I mean, I took a few steps like I was doing what he said. And then I yeah. saw some other people doing it. I go, yeah, fuck this guy. Yeah. And then we just cut across. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I don't get when people get hung up Weird on these power, power trips. trips. Yeah. Yeah. Do you I feel like know. you'd be that guy though? If you were given a walkie-talkie at an event, like the Stanford Prison Experiment, I would yeah, just start would you doing human pyramids and kicking people and shit? <laughs> yeah, you just give me like I was like that for a cross guard. Yeah, like when I was in elementary school, I, you, like I helped the kids cross the street, but it went to my head. Yeah, yeah, and I would like punch people in the stomach. Yeah, and I'd be like I control the streets. <laughs> you want to get home? You got to grease my palms. Uh, you got any Jolly Ranchers in your pocket? And they give me a lemon, oh, and I go, "Ooh, that's how you do I it." I want cherry, bitch. That's how you do it. I would curb stomp other kids, <laughs> and then I go, "You say you fell," <laughs> and they go, "Okay." And like yeah, a lot of kids had no teeth, yeah, because I curb stomped you, them. Yeah, man, you knocked them all. Because I was so close to a curb. Ooh, yeah. Because you know, helping kids. Yeah, you gotta walk, help them walk. I gotta help them walk. Yeah. Yeah. It's just all that power went to my head. Did you I actually was. It was called Street Patrol. Oh, we we were patrolled too. We had to went, we had to go to school a little early because you know you got to yeah, yeah. be there before the kids. Yeah, and so I would have an orange vest, a vest had, or like a, a whistle, a badge. I had a vest. Oh, okay. You know, like a construction kind of orange oh, interesting. reflector. We vest. had this this like a little, sash. Yeah, like you're Miss America. It was a sash, but it would buckle. Whoa. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had the orange vest. I had a whistle and I had a flag that said stop. Mm. So you would just be on the edge and then you'd go out and then your buddy would be on the other side. And then you would do that. And then the kids would cross and then you would like wrap it up. Damn. And you would do that for a while. Damn. But there were some perks. Yeah. At the end of the week, you got, I think, 10 Jolly Ranchers. Oh, wow. Five, five or 10 Jolly Ranchers. That's how they paid you. That guys. was like our pension. Yeah. Yeah, I was on the force, you know? Okay. So the, the, <laughs> the benefits are pretty good. Yeah. So I'm all about Blue Lives Matter. You right, know, right. Because I get it. Yeah, you get it. I've, I've been there. You've been behind that blue I've line. I've been behind, yeah. It's not easy. <laughs> we're dealing with a lot of people who yeah. don't know when to cross. Yeah. A lot of lives they're are mad at hands. us. They're like spitting on us because they want to cross when they want to cross. Yeah. And we're just trying to protect them from cars. They're just yelling from Mazdas, you, Hondas, yeah. Civics, you know? Yeah. But they're like, oink, oink. Yeah. Fucking crosswalk pig. They don't know what you go through, man. They don't know what I, I yeah, I go through extensive training. I had to watch film. Yeah. I had to take a test to help people cross the street. You had to train for it. You I know? had to train for it. The hours of training. Yeah. Yeah. So you would get Jolly Ranchers, and then also uh, some days we would get Maple Bars, mm. and then we get Swiss Miss. Okay. 
which is chocolate, you know, yeah. chocolate milk, or no, it's like a hot cocoa situation. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. They so treated water, you guys. Mix it in. Yeah, it's pretty great. You get Sometimes you've got marshmallows in the Swiss Miss. Okay. Speaking of marshmallows, uh, I'll get to that in a sec, but um, I, in fourth grade, so fifth, fifth and sixth grade is when you can be a patrol in like in Virginia, Northern Virginia. So in fourth grade is when they choose if you're going to be a trainee because they train you lead like the last you're two like weeks. Of, puppy. Yeah. The last two weeks of summer, like leading to summer, they train you. Right. And then next year you come in with your badge and your sla- uh, satchel, you know, we got guns. Do you get guns? We got batons. You got baton. Yeah. yeah, we got, yeah. They gave us firearms. <laughs> yeah. Damn. I never had to shoot mine. That's why when you were bringing up the range. Right. That's like I've, why I've, I've, yeah. I handled a gun. Yeah. Yeah. But I've never had to. You've been uh, in situations, but you never pulled I it out. I almost sh- had to shoot a kid. Yeah. It's been. He, he, <laughs> I almost had to because he was kind of like hopping off the curb a little right, bit. Right, right, right. And it was dangerous for the other kids. You so were in I Texas. Almost had to. Uh, no, it was. It's so funny, man. Uh, we, we we used to hold a a flag out. Yeah. The we'd ride the bus. Did you ever ride the bus or did you walk to school? Yeah, I would ride the bus. We'd ride the bus, and when the bus would drop someone off, I would have to run out in front of the bus stand with a flag and stop cars mm. and let the little kids yeah the ducklings yeah and then i i roll uh, like your flag i roll that flag up <laughs> and i run back on the bus and i place it interesting yeah no, we didn't have that we I, didn't have like a, yeah. a permanent bus cross i don't guy. see it anymore like i i think it might have stopped it's in a throwback 1999 of, of older era yeah 2000, 2000. You're really dating yourself with your bus crosswalk uh, stuff. yeah damn it yeah but then um I gave up that life. You gave up the life. Yeah, I did. You have flashbacks me. or whatever. Like, I, yeah, I, I wake up in like a heat, you know, and like I'm just. Dr- <sighs> it was close. Yeah. Do they still have those? I don't know. I like when it's kids, you know. Yeah. When it's adults, it just seems like they should be doing something else. Yeah, but it does get to your head though. Power? As a nine, ten year old, yeah, that shit got to my head. Well, I would confiscate coke and stuff, you know. So I was like doing some. I was like bad lieutenant. <laughs> yeah, just in the locker room. Yeah, just like yeah. That's sometimes sometimes <laughs> it'd be airheads and stuff, and I'd be like, "What's this?" Yeah, yeah. I'd slam him against the wall. And like, what? Are we, what? Are we, well, well, well. It, it was um. It's it like, was it's fu- me. It was fun dip. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> You know you can't have this. <laughs> I'll hold on to it for yeah, you. This is some contraband. Yeah, yeah. some contraband. <laughs> I knew who to talk to and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. In school, I was I would sell candy. I would make money by doing that. What kind of candy would you sell? Gum and like now and later, sweet oh, tarts. Dude. I would just I was very entrepreneurial. I would uh, buy a bunch of candy and then yeah. sell it on my backpack. Now was this a consistent thing throughout the year or was it like a one off? <sighs> like a week uh, or two? Maybe a week or two. It didn't become yeah. my main thing. But I, then when C D burners came out, bro, I was the pirate oh, I the was pir- uh Piracy guy. I, 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 I'm, dude, I'm sure we talked about it in one of Probably. the last hundred episodes. Uh, 50 cents, get rich or die trying came out. You made a lot of money off that? It's two dollars. We were charging kids two dollars. We didn't know when money was. We didn't know, like, CDs go for 20, but I can make ten dollars off this $10 or five dollars. Nothing. That's a like sweatshop. We were prices. charging two dollars and fifty. And I was, let me tell you what I was doing. I was burning it. I had a printer that would print out that labels. Nice? On on like a label. I was just on doing CDs. Sharpie. I was a Sharpie operation. I would print it out. I was doing paper sleeves too. I learned how to fold computer paper. Yeah. And to make a CD case. Yeah. yeah. And then I would staple it, and so it's very janky. I bought like jewel cases. You're put, like the worst businessman. I am, dude. Don't. If don't, you came on Shark Tank, they would be like, "So you're losing like, money. Bye. They're you're losing ten dollars a CD, and you're selling, you know, yeah, for two fifty. I'm like, yeah. I get two fifty. I sold. Um, I was. I made a lot of money on the Marshall Mathers LP when oh, that came out. Oh, okay. Five bucks a pop. Damn. Such a huge album. Damn. Yeah. Hey man, those. I bought my parents' steal. house. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Being able to get that Tower of Blank CDs. Oh my god! I would go to Comp USA. I remember Comp USA. Comp USA. We're really dating ourselves yeah. here. Yeah. I would get a hundred blank CDR spindle. Yeah, yeah. For twenty bucks, it was super cheap. It was amazing. Yeah. Sometimes they wouldn't write. Some of the discs wouldn't write. Mm. They would well, be sometimes that's the right speed. You know, you're uh-huh. going too fast. You're probably doing like 10x. Yeah, I, I was. You te- I was like literally 10 years old. I didn't know what I was doing, man. <sighs> now iPods exist, guys. Doesn't matter. All right, are we? We got to go to this party, huh? iPods Did we don't do it? exist anymore, Fahim. Yeah, it's fuck. Why am I like iPods <laughs> exist? I'm like holding a fucking iPhone. What you're year dating are we in? You're dating yourself again. Yeah. What's an iPad? What's an iPod? Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, nothing in the mailbag. Uh, 
I mean, we could do a quick one. Okay. We got one or two. Okay. But yeah, while you pull that up, yeah, I, I do, uh, you know, uh, like I was saying about the guns, if our listeners feel uncomfortable, I just want to put a little disclaimer out there. If, you know, legislation's passed and all guns are banned, I would be happy. Hmm. We're in a gun-free world. But, you know, while it's here, I go in a safe, <laughs> contained, contained environment where there's like, you know, protocol and safety right. measures. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's, you know, I and you I, go and you go and try to stop me, <laughs> trying to stop me and try to take my gun from. I don't know. Cold, what did they say? Cold. You can pry this gun from my cold dead hand, dead something. hand, something like that. No, I'd probably give you the guns. Yeah. You know, I would be like, OK, you know, I, I had my fun here. Yeah. Go. But uh, we'll shoot. Uh, so with first timers, uh, we'll do. The fuck is that supposed to mean? How well, dare like, you? People who are like, uh, like what if I've seen a lot of action movies? Don't I go to the advanced class? I, I, it, I've seen bad boys several times. You know, it's funny today. I said that. <laughs> really? While my friend was like loading, I was like, "Think like I was like, think like you're Will Smith and Bad Boys." Can just... I go with an unbuttoned shirt? I just have like a li- underneath. We'll and I'm both oiled up. We'll both do that. Yeah. Can I have sunglasses. Yeah. Can I bring my own doves to the shooting range? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not to shoot them, but just to like, to, like release, release them. them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just for effect. Yeah. While you shoot, I'll throw the doves behind you. Yeah. yeah. That'd be dope. The, I think that's the gunshot sounds will like terrify, but it, it's for the art. Yeah. It's for the experience. They'll understand. They'll, the doves will understand. They'll be free. Yeah. It's better to be traumatized and free yeah. than not being be scared by gunshots and be in a cage. Except, dude, I say I that, that all like the Plato, time. that's like Play-Doh, right? That's or Play-Doh. That, yeah. No, that's Play-Doh. That's Play-Doh. But yeah, we'll do a, We'll typically do a handgun, any kind of handgun that's available, a SIG or a Smith & Wesson, like one of the handguns, a 9mm. Nice. And then um, we'll do like maybe an assault rifle. This is funny. You're like a gun sommelier. <laughs> yeah. Um, For you... I would do a Smith and Wesson. Yeah, um, we'll try that on for size, and then can I interest you in a Beretta? Because when I go with like Beretta s- for the table, <laughs> Beretta Italian. You yeah, want to yeah, shoot yeah. Italian? We go, we go Beretta. Uh-huh. Actually, I don't. I think it's Italian, but um, I like some of my friends. I like some of the friends I go with. They're scared of the kickback. Right. They're like, I don't know, you know. So I'm like, all right, we'll get a revolver. Like a, Is there a kickback on? Or not very, 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 yeah. And then I'll get like an assault rifle, maybe an AR-15. What the f- Whoa, and man, then that's scary. and then the advanced is the Remington 870 shotgun pump action. So you shoot it and you feel like you're like fucking Stallone or something. You're like, and it it kicks. It oh my God, it kicks. But like that pump, the second you pump and you see the cartridge like fly out, you're like, you oh. The, ding, 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 ding. Ding, ding. Oh yeah. Well now the cartridges are like plastic. So you don't, know. that's not as cool. But if you're shooting like a AR or. Can you make the sound effects for me? Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course, 100%. So just be in my ear and go. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. It's like, all right, this is from Asuka oh, uh, Iguchi. Okay. Hopefully I'm saying it right. Sorry if I butchered it. Subject heading Cobbs. Fahim, I really enjoyed your show at Cobbs Comedy tonight. I will be moving to Irvine in a couple of months, so I'll have to go to the comedy store to see you more often. By the way, it never ceases to amaze me how nice you are to Aristotle when he pulls out the gloves to handle his new sneakers. You always make some playful comments here and there and never bully him. I wonder how you keep so much restraint. <laughs> Yeah, that is very nerd bully. Yeah, it's easy pickings. It's easy pickings, but, but we, you know, we, we that's have, his passion. We have like I a support. Yeah. His passion. We have like a non-written verbal rule where we're just not bullies to what you're not bullies. Yeah, we don't want to be. We we want to uh, much... enable everyone's nerdiness. Yeah, you know. Yes. Yeah. There was uh, da, 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 when I keep so much restraint. There was one, the one time when Aristotle talked about how he traded shoes with a random guy who had his shoe size. This random person had these shoes in his possession, probably manhandling them with his oily hands. Then he makes you wear gloves to touch the same pair Wait. of shoes. Too funny. Was this on Thanks a podcast? Thanks for making me laugh. Best, Asuka. Was this a previous uh, podcast? Oh, yeah. You guys? He's brought his shoes here before. Okay. And then there's latex gloves that we have to put on to like oh. to handle. Wait, now, was this a bit or was he being for real? You know, no one knows. No, one, you maybe, know, maybe I guess both. I no feel one. like it's serious. I feel like it's... What shoes were they? Or do I have to watch the episode? Yeah, I mean, I don't remember. Some I gotta, sort of Jordans. Okay, I got to watch to know. And then we did an Air Max one time too okay all right uh, this is from zaman uh alizada subject heading brent weinbach brent weinbach because i had brent on okay just finished listening to the episode with brent who was a great guest but to think he could answer our questions after one episode the balls on this dude loved how you turned him down awkwardly can you shit on him a bit with aristotle <laughs> jk he was a fun guest uh, found you on joe rogan i've been following you ever since love from montreal oh nice hey, man. thanks thanks 
Hey, Brent didn't know any better. He thought that I just do mailbag every episode. He didn't know that that's kind of oh. like, you know, the thing that we do. Oh, wait. So he, because he, clearly he must be a listener if he's like. I think I brought it up. Oh, like, okay, okay. Uh, or I actually don't know. I forgot if he brought it up or I brought it up. Okay. But somehow the mailbag got brought up. I'm sure. I'd like to believe he he listens to the podcast and yes. he's like, hey, Fahim. He's a diehard. Are we going to mailbag it? You know? All right. I think that's all we got. I got to pick a tasty tune for you guys. Okay. 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 What do we got? What do we got? Anything planned for this weekend? You doing anything? What am I doing? Nah, I'm just at the store. I'm doing store Saturday. Okay. Well, I we we might pod after this in the next couple of days. We might not. But, you know, if we don't, mm-hmm. I just want to say goodbye to our listeners. He's killing himself, guys. I'm like, uh, killing myself. That's why you're just so nice. We lied about the Jason Nash thing, but you're yeah. actually going to end it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just sort of saving time instead you're of right. dressing the body. It's so funny. Right? There's you this actually a, have the box outside I do. Of here. I, it's, it's right. So you're going to do it and kind of fall into it. Yeah. And then all I got to do is put the top on. Yeah. Okay. The holes already dug. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I like to be considerate. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's very cool of you. Uh, it's funny. Uh, there's just like, you know what, where El C- uh, Cid is, or El Cid yeah, yeah, in yeah. Silver Lake. Yeah. There's like a little bridge that like that's right next to it, and like whenever my friends and I like walk walk over it or walk by it, I always joke. I'm like, whenever I'm feeling blue, I come to this bridge and. I contemplate jump, and it's a tiny bridge too. Like if I jump, you just hurt yourself. Yeah, I would just like sprain my ankle Ow. at most, you know. But it's become such a like a bit now that like it's just it's like beating a dead horse. But I just I can't resist. It's like a dad joke at this yeah. point, where I'm like, they're like, oh my gosh, shut the fuck up. I'm like, <laughs> you know it's coming. Yeah. All right, this song. Oh yeah, I was gonna say goodbye. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, say goodbye. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, so sorry. I might be gone for like two months. I'm uh traveling, going to Europe for a bit. Uh, friend's wedding and some other things. So. Um, I I will be back in August, okay. you know. So if this is the last episode we do, I'll see you guys in two months. But if not, I'll see you guys one more week. All right, there you have it. And with that, guys, I'm gonna blow you out to this track. It is called "Days Go By," and it's by Subtract and Toro y Moi. Oh, is it Moi or Moi? I don't moi? know, but they're good. I love Toro. Yeah, you know, and Subtract I'm a huge fan of now too. All right, see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.